from one series that is ruining my life to another. Oh, wheels, that'll happen for sure. That'll happen. Don't worry. From one series that's trying to ruin my life to another, it's time for the 2038 season with the Pittsburgh Pirates. 2038. We have not made the playoffs once. Once. <sighs> God. All right. To uh, quickly showcase what the team looks like, so on and so forth. A nice little refresher for everybody. Yeah. Rock your body. Yeah. 20 year rebuild. Still can't make the playoffs. The real life pirates are closer than the team that we have had to rebuild currently is. So again, at catcher, uh, we have now lost our two best catchers, and our starting catcher for the season is 31-year-old Ray Nunez. So that's fun. Uh, we have a lot of catchers that are kind of in the mix here. We'll see what the hell happens in terms of development and such. But yeah, Ray Nunez is our major league catcher. First base, of course, Vince Messer, Pablo Ramirez, as it's been. Uh, did I see the video about the White Sox fan that called into Chicago Radio and went on a seven-minute rant about how shit the team is? I didn't. That sounds fun. That reminds me of the Sabres fan that did that a couple years ago. First base, everybody. First base. You've already looked at it. Second base, Scott Obama. Because, again, we had a rookie of the year second baseman who fell off by age 23. <laughs> because Pittsburgh. Because Pittsburgh. Mozone, please do. I want to see that. Scott Obama is our second baseman. We do have Lewis McCall in the system, so we'll see what happens. We'll see what happens. Third base, Ricky Gutierrez. Again, thank God we resigned him. Thank God. Uh, Chad Dean and Joe Dale. <laughs> Two men, four first names between them. At third base, shortstop is Mr. Fritas. Gutierrez is a depth option, which is pretty nice. Of course, we drafted Casey Roberson last year. He should end up being decent, hopefully. Left field, Ruben Ott with Ken Hahn and Ramon Hinayosa. Also there. Um, and then there's the biggest bust of all time. Center field and legit stars. I mean, Rick Gutierrez is a 96. Center field. Could it be Dave Roberts' fault as the farm director? <laughs> Probably. <laughs> We have DJ Liss in center. Don't really have a great project, though, in terms of anyone being built up. And then on the right is Charles Rivas. Some of you franchise easy to pick up. Yes. Um, there are certain specific baseball things, like not being able to trade draft picks, the Rule 5 draft, but for the most part, it is pretty straightforward to pick up. One more season in AAA for Ricky McCann before he's ready to go. Pitching staff looks like this. We have three 82-plus pitchers for the first time in uh, a while. So that's pretty cool. <laughs> and again, we do have some project pitchers in the minors. So, you know, pitching shouldn't be a major concern over the next few years. Uh, bullpen, as always, could end up using some help here and there. But for the most part, it's still pretty strong. So... Again, any year could be the year that this team just ups and pops off. Should note as well, I did update the scouts. We have pretty much the best possible scouting department that we can have right now. So we'll see what happens there. Overalls are pretty similar, yes. Yeah, I mean, yeah, pretty much. Because, I mean, in MLB, you can have like a, a low to mid-70 overall in, in the majors. It's not ideal, or in the NFL. It's not ideal, but it can happen. Top prospects, I had already looked at this list. This was the generational catcher that was just selected in the last draft for Cleveland. Our only representative is Grant Riley, who is in the majors, so he won't be there too much longer. <sighs> Let's see. Why not? Let's put up a prediction. Let's put up a prediction over under 80 and a half wins. Which basically means, will we be over 500? Will we make the playoffs? That's pretty much what we're going for, right? That's pretty much what we're going for. I hate it here. Sorry, I'm distracted at the moment. 
Oh, goodness. I missed a text. All right, there we go. We're good. Past year's record was about 79 wins again, as per usual. As per usual. All right. Before the scouting, I do need to go and check the uh, minor league lineups. Wow, it actually plays Trevor Wells over Maurice Burnett. Interesting. That is not a good idea. Fishman, Reyna at second. We can go with Carter. That's fine. Mm, go for Reyna. We do need Pena in there. Mozone, thank you. Like I said, I'll, I don't know if I'll check it out on stream, but I will check it out. All right, let's do that. Uh, and, okay, just hitting all the wrong buttons. We're off to a good start. Double A is going to have a lot of people on the bench, but it is what it is. Now, the Red Sox are uh, better to start, but how long was the Red Sox franchise compared to this? Not even close. <laughs> I think we made it to 2030 in Boston, but yeah. 11th overall pick. We have 11, 36, and 47. So three picks in the top 47. A good chance to do some damage. But will we? Will we? Will we? I don't know how I want to do this either. Do we just look at the top players available? Oh, God, shout out to who's the dude. <laughs> oh, God, what do we do? We do have a couple catchers in the system. We don't really need a first baseman. We kind of sort of need another second baseman. I'm only wondering this for the sake of generalized scouting. I do think, I mean, we need to end up with the best player we possibly can, but generalized scouting is a good way to do it. Let's double check the team really quickly. So again, at catcher, I mean, Fodor, Lopez. Eh, I mean, I'd put catcher as a, as an in-between kind of need at the moment. First base, we're fine. Messer, Burnett. Yeah, we really don't need a first baseman at all. Second base. Oh, man, the abs are going to win, aren't they? Second base, we have McCall. We can have that as an in-between in terms of a need. Third base, we have Gutierrez. We don't need a third baseman. Shortstop, we have Freitas. We don't need a shortstop unless he's generational. Uh, left field, it would be nice. It would be nice to get another outfielder. Yeah, left field, center. I think just in general, we'll be looking at the outfield as our primary. And then some pitching, if need be. All right. So generalize scouting for the outfield is the game plan for the first little bit. Because we do not have an elite outfielder in any position. Somebody has already been injured. Two-week injury for Scott Obama. Good start. <laughs> Good start to the new season. All right, and let's go left field international while we see. Well, actually, you know what? Let's do it this way. Let's go center field west. Let's just do it this way first. President down. <laughs> Figured out how to turn off injuries this year. I'm good with it. It's fine. I'm not I'm not too worried about injuries. It's just a part of the It's a part of the game. We're 10 and 5 to start the season. We haven't been absurdly bad yet. We haven't been absurdly bad yet, but this team has had about four collapses in the final month of the season in a row. So you never, you never know what to expect. All right, there we go. Get our generalized scouting done for the outfield. 16 and 12. The Maple Pirates. At least the Maple Leafs can make the playoffs. Okay, who do we have that might be half decent here? Tom Cho. Charlie Parker. Archie Romero. Let's just find out. Let's just find out. We will hyper-focus on the outfield this year and what I feel like is going to be a massive mistake, but I'm already committing to it. I mean, yeah, none of these guys are looking like they're going to be 
absolutely elite. They're all looking like they could be okay. Still look at Russell Peterson, I guess. Uh, definitely looking at Albert Werdekemper. Can I buy a vowel? And that is it in right field. Jesus, what about center? Luis Mortero? Please? Albert Wordkeeper, your favorite librarian. We're 25 and 15. But feel free to not get your hopes up. Word of Kemper's got a hell of a potential range there. Feel free to not get your hopes up, given the history of this team. We got a lot of center fielders who are kind of in that half decent range. I feel like I'm really going to regret trying to scout out center field specifically, but uh, hey, here we are. We're committing. We are committing to this. Look at Norm Gallegos. He's the last one there. And then in left, Rico Ruiz. Let's look at Robert Rivera. Robert Rivera. 30 and 21 is not bad. All right, Rico Ruiz is looking pretty good. I don't know if he's outright number one worthy, but... Can't do much for fielding, apparently. So, do we also want to look at the guys who are like 61 to 92? I don't think we do. Let's look at Shane Kessler. I want to get more information on Jack Gaudio. We could get more on Rivera, but we're okay. Don't need any more on Kohler. Okay, not a bad way to start. Let's look at the top of the board now. Look at starting pitcher Leroy Cox. Two left fielders and a starter. Oops. All right. 40. Oh, Will Wilga. The legend. Will Wilga. On his way to the Giants. Someone we probably should have drafted way back in the day. Okay, Jack Gaudio. Leroy Cox is looking pretty damn good. Equal as a closer. It would be beneficial to have the information on the closer as well. It would be, it would be. Is there anybody? Let's look at a Rosco. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of players here, but we just don't know. Again, the problem is we don't really need short stops. Just prioritize catcher. Catcher in second base. Start off at second. So Kevin Kemp, Rusty Cantu, and Matthew Cloven. Do I have time? I do not have time for generalized scouting here. So, uh, uh... But I have to. Oh, boy. All right. Catcher West. Shout out to Decol for the 43 months. Appreciate you. How the heck are you? Welcome into my nightmare. Welcome into my nightmare. 27 days out from the draft. We're in a three-team race at the moment for the division lead. National. Let's go second base West. Second base central. I don't know how well this is going to work out for us, but hey. We're going to go for it. This team's still winning games, though. 39 and 30. It's not bad at all. Second base east. Second base international. Let's go back over to catcher. Quite a few catchers I'd like information on. That's for sure. That's for sure. Damn. There's just never enough time. 
I swear. There's just never enough time to look at everyone you need to look at. There's a bunch of pitchers and relievers that we don't really have much info on. There just isn't a single one of these catchers where I'm like, yep, that's the guy. I mean, 66 to 97 is the best range. No, it's not. 67, 98, Brian Silva. Or do we look at somebody else? Especially this 23-year... You know what? Screw it. Let's look at the 23-year-old reliever for this week. Can you tell my confidence is down for this upcoming draft? Even though we typically do well. We're 10 games over 500. This really could be the season in which we finally make the playoffs. Knock on wood. Second base, Eddie Bonilla. Son of Bobby. Actually, at this point, Jesus would be grandson of Bobby. Okay, there are a couple of other people that we could look at. Week 13 of 14. Honestly, I am going to go for the generalized scouting for pitchers. For starters, at least. That is the game plan. Ten games over 500. Ten games over 500. We can look. Playoffs unless September has different plans. Yeah, right? We can look at one other person. Let's go back over to second baseman. Is there anybody with like a really crazy range where you just have to say, look at this one. Benia would have just stopped getting paid by the Mets three years ago. Hmm. Is that random first baseman? But again, we don't need a first baseman. There's some of these catchers, but... Oh, if anyone's looks like, yep, that's the guy to, to steal away. Antigua is a closer. Roscoe the shortstop. Ralph Comer as a closer. David Escobedo. A lot of people of a similar potential range. What about Jake Poles? Not Pauls, but Poles. Does he, though? Does he? If he can hit that well, he might. Well, Jake might be the guy to look at. Unless we want to... Uh, ooh, further information on Reggie Black would actually be pretty good for us here. It'd be pretty good. It'd be pretty good. Uh, let's go ahead and save, because again, I never want to have to redo scouting on a draft ever again. It was a nightmare the one time we had to do it, because I lost freaking internet for five minutes. Couple of nights ago. That might have been a week ago at this point. I don't even know. The 2038 MLB draft. God help me. God help me. Atlanta, Tampa, and Cleveland in the top three. Let's do it. So, the last five years have gone by fast. The Atlanta Braves, with the number one selection, take starting pitcher Leroy Cox. Drake, we haven't made the playoffs. 23-year-old starter Leroy Cox. But yeah, I mean, he looks like he's going to be absolutely phenomenal. Good pick for Atlanta. Uh, with the second overall selection, the Tampa Bay Rays select... Starting pitcher Jeffrey McGowan. We go a little bit off the board to take Jeff McGowan. And the Cleveland Guardians, fresh off of drafting a generational talent at catcher last year, select left fielder Rico Ruiz. Yeah. Being stuck in the teens for draft picks is pure torture. It really is. 
pure torture. Arizona at four, right fielder Charles Lachero. So they go a little bit off the board for him. He was projected 44th. So Charles is off the board. Duly noted. Uh, shortstop Luis Orozco, no surprise. He ends up going off the board fifth to Seattle. There goes that second baseman we were eyeing up. Second baseman Kevin Kemp on his way to the White Sox. You got Baltimore taking the closer, Robert Lantigua. Robert Lantigua. Robert Sanchez, starting pitcher, an injured starting pitcher, on his way to the Mets. Got the Angels at nine, taking Eddie Quintana, who was projected ninth as a reliever, fun fact. He must be great if they're taking him ninth. And at 10, San Diego takes shortstop Tom Stockton. So who does that leave us with? It leaves us with a shortstop we know nothing about in Freddy Palacios. Again, we don't really need a shortstop. We don't know much about Ralph Comer, Jack Wagner, Tyrell Redmond. Hopefully one of them will be available at 36. There is a starter, Fletcher Harrington. We don't need the first baseman. Okay, yeah, there are a bunch of relievers. A bunch of relievers to take later on. We don't need the third baseman. There's another starter, Damian Fairchild. Reds, how about him? Center fielder Luis Mortero, who is hurt. Ray Moda. Got Tom Cho. Willie Malanka. Jake Pools. Justin Cannon. Great name for a closer. Catcher Luke Elliott. David Pedroza. Donnie Stewart. Got Trevor McCormick. Reggie Black, who's going to have a good potential, but his overall is going to suck. CJ Bass. Just trying to get a lot of people onto our list here that we have information about. Honestly, at that point, we'll uh, lower the list from there. We don't need a third baseman. Don't need a shortstop. All right, I mean, we're down pretty far. So in terms of who our scouts think should have been up there, there's Canadian starter Fletcher Harrington, who we really know nothing about. There's Fairchild. I know there was at least one or two guys I added that had a... Pretty poor potential range. We'll get Donnie Stewart out of there. Uh, Chance Davis. Good name, but we don't need him. All right. We got two minutes to decide here, and boy, we don't really have anybody that we're at least certain of. There's more tarot as a relief or as an outfielder, I should say, but in terms of attributes, it's not looking great. He is a switch hitter, though. Honestly, we've taken starters in the first round the last couple of years. It's probably the time to take a risk on another outfielder. I don't know enough about Pedroza. A lot of catchers as Rubio later on. I think it's going to be one of these two outfielders, and we just hope for the best. So it's either Luis Mortero, and our scouts thing should be taken about 24th. Oh, God. This doesn't look pretty. This doesn't look pretty at all. Uh, but all we can do right now is just kind of go best guess. Our scouting, again, did not really benefit us, this particular strategy. We need a center fielder kind of in the system. So let's take Luis Mortero and hope that you're not complete trash. I know he's listed as injured, but that's never really a disqualifier for me. I'll go back to the first round at the end to see who was taken. Fortunately, a lot of those relievers are off the board. But now is probably the time to take one of them. Because there's a lot of them. There's the uh, the foursome of 65 to 99s or whatever the hell, 95s, I believe it was. Terrell Redmond, Michael Francis, Rich Cortez, or Julio Calderon. Uh, 
You don't know a damn thing about any of them. Given the Calderon, I mean, this guy's 19, the other guys are 18, but Calderon has the highest uh, potential possibility without being injured. Or we just take the injured, the injured options. Fuck it. Michael Francis. I never care. I don't even care. I had a bad feeling about our scouting approach. It uh, appeared to be uh, the right way to go. It clearly wasn't. And now we are greatly, greatly suffering as a result. Now is the time to take Reggie Black as a starter and hope that his overall actually isn't that bad. It's somewhere in the 50s. I mean, yeah, there's really no one else that can compare to him that we know about outside of Randy Womack at center. Take a look at Randy Womack. Projected to be selected later. It doesn't look that bad. It would be nice to get a starter into the mix, though. So, uh, shout out to starting pitcher Reggie Black. Why not? Let's go with you. We don't have to uh, we don't have to overhype at this point, given that you know how many prospects have we gotten hyped about and it hasn't worked. So Pedro Santos is available. Do we have anybody else? Sixty-five ninety-nine. Let's start looking. Albert Werdekemper is available. It's also Waylon Hendricks. Jimmy Hernandez, oh god, out of nowhere, they're actual players that you could argue maybe we should have gone for first, since we know they're half decent. This is going to be an interesting end of this draft. Jack Gaudio and left. Don't know much about him, but Damian Ortega, it's Brian Silva. Got the mo. Whole lot of players on the short list right now. A whole lot. Got to get this uh, this short list established really quickly. A short list that's not really going to be all that short by the end of this. We got about two and a half minutes to pull this off. Okay. So Pedro Santos, we don't know much about him, 62 to 93, but then there is Werdekemper, who has a decent chance of being an A. I think we have no choice but to go for the Canadian, Albert Werdekemper. Given our need for elite outfielders, uh, we're going to go for him. He'll be our second outfielder of the draft. And then we'll see who we get from here. Wayne Hendricks is still on the board. So let's sort out those who are not in a position of need, which would be shortstop, that would be third base. Okay, there's a lot of shortstops available the rest of the way. Who's the best shortstop of the bunch? Are they all 65 to 99? No, this guy's showing up as 80 to 99, but I highly doubt that's accurate. And as it is, he's the third baseman, Ramiro. We don't know about secondary positions, so drafting him to say, hey, he can play shortstop doesn't exactly fly. How many catchers do we have? Right, it's just these four. 6798, 72-88, 71-92, 67 98. Both of these guys' potentials look like they could be absolutely tragic. Let's see. The outfielders, the second baseman, and the pitchers. All right. Relievers, 73 to 92 for Ortega. Put him ahead of Nieve. If we were to take another starter in this draft, it would be Wayland Hendricks. Second base, Diaz, anything special? 7395s, a bunch of 7395s, and then Jack Gaudio. Shit. It's either Hendricks or Gaudio.
Given that those other outfielders we can take, but not other starters, we're going to go for uh, Waylon Hendricks as opposed to uh, Jimmy Jennings. Waylon Hendricks, welcome aboard. Uh, and Jack Gaudio is actually still there. So that worked out perfectly. Let's go for left fielder Jack Gaudio with the next selection. I mean, hey, this draft might be good for us. It might not. And in round six, it comes down to these five. 67-98, 71-92. We can take out Nieve. I mean, Daryl Smith, we can take him out too. Honestly, shortstop not being a need. We're going to go for a catcher. This is a tough one. Dobson's apparently a switch hitter and is rocking what looks to be a sweet mullet. But his overall might be terrible. Hello, Crash Andrews. How are you? Present power, 0 to 30. Nice. We'll go for catcher Andreas Mesa in what does have the potential to be one of our worst drafts yet, if we're being honest. My confidence level on that one's very low. Uh, the rest of the first round, I'm not actually going to be able to scroll through this fast enough to know. Uh, because it, isn't it going to reset when Washington makes their pick? Yeah, so we'll see how the draft plays out. We'll see how the 2038 draft plays out for us. Um, please, God, let it be good, please. We're in first place right now. The draft could have gone well. Maybe things are going to be okay. Or not. 